called Mail Time with Craig. We interview local soccer stud Maxi Rodriguez from Detroit City FC, and then England and Germany. Who you got? It's coming up. All right, so stick around. Lots of fun today, lots of soccer, lots of transfer rumors. You name it, we're talking about it. Uh, a big thank you right off the bat to our friends uh, who've been with us since the start of the show. Big thank you to Detroit City FC. They've got a game tonight and a game next weekend you guys need to get to. All right. Championship game, July 3rd. Make sure you get tickets. DebtCityFC.com. Detroit City. We're big fans of them. Uh, you got to get out and watch them. The atmosphere at Keyworth for Detroit City is unreal. Big thank you to Michigan Jaguars. MichiganJaguarsFC.com is where you can find them. Uh, the Michigan Jags have a lot of teams that are playing in a big tournament this weekend down in St. Louis. We'll talk more about that later coming up. Uh, so good luck to all the teams down there. Uh, Tim Merritt with Ross Mortgage. Tim's a good buddy of mine. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Ross Mortgage. We appreciate you being with us. And Aaron and Next Level Training. I tell you what. I've been, uh, been out to some of the trainings with Aaron and his Next Level group, and uh, the, the quality of players that they have out there is absolutely phenomenal. So if you're looking to improve your skills, if you're looking to get your son or your daughter uh, into soccer and be better at it, check out Aaron and Next Level Training. They're, they got camps coming up this summer. Um, I'm getting my kids enrolled because it's going to be fun. All right, so along with all the soccer we have, along with the friends, what else do we have on the show today? Well, folks, back with me is someone um, who's online been dubbed my sidekick. I, I don't know if I like the sidekick. I'm going to go with, uh, with kind of a bodyguard. Let's go with that. The show's kind of getting a little bit bigger, so maybe I need a bodyguard. Um, or you, got, you guys might know him ha as Nate. Uh, today, we're going to maybe call him Gunter. Nate, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, my friends. Welcome back. I bring all the pride of Germany with me. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure the getup you're in. What, what, uh, what is this? It's authentic. It's what you wear out, you know. This is go out in town, go out to the, the beer tent. This is what you wear. I noticed you brought a, uh, a Stein with you there oh, yeah. as well. Ta hold that up for yeah, the, There you go. Wow, look at that thing. Uh, That's actually, I think that might be heavier than the table we're sitting at. It is. This is how I get, you know, this is my workout. The one liter, one liter curls right oh, here. Oh, my word. Um, well, as you can see, Nate's in full German regalia. I'm in my England jersey because England are playing Germany in the knockout rounds. That game's on Tuesday and coming up in a little bit. Nate and I are going to give reasons why we think our team is going to win. So Nate's got a couple reasons why he thinks Germany's going to win, and I've got a couple reasons why I think England's going to win. So stick around. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, a few shout-outs right off the bat. So... Um, Miss Soccer was awarded recently. A Madison Salzenstein is the Miss Soccer of Michigan. Congratulations and a big shout out there to Madison. Uh, and big shout out to the 23 teams from 11 different clubs in, in the state, from the state of Michigan that are competing in the USYS Midwest Regional Championship in St. Louis. Big time there. It's, uh, it's a big honor for some of those youth teams to be heading down to St. Louis and... Uh, and competing in that tournament. So good luck, everybody. We hope to see some silverware coming home to Michigan. All right? All right, folks, we're going to jump in and talk about some world soccer. World Soccer News is brought to you by Tim Merritt and Ross Mortgage. If you need a, a new mortgage or you're looking to refinance, give Tim Merritt a call. He can help you out. We're done with the group stages of Euro 2020, and now it's on to the knockout rounds. Eight teams have gone home, and we're left with 16. Before we get into those 16, I do want to quickly point out a note from the group of death, which was group F. Hungary have gone home. They were eliminated. They finished fourth in the group of death. They could have finished second, except for Germany put in an 84th minute goal uh, to tie up that game. But I want to read a quick stat uh, from that game, from that group, sorry. Hungary were ahead for more minutes than any other team in the group, and they trailed for fewer minutes than any other group in, uh, team in that group. They led and then trailed by, uh, that, that's phenomenal. Uh, th that group consisted of Portugal, Germany, and France. And no one gave Hungary a chance of getting out of it, and they were so close to doing it. 
what a great group that came down to the final minutes. The entire group uh, was turned on its head there uh, several times in that third game. Um, I don't know. For me, that was probably, the, as I said, the group of death, but the most entertaining group uh, throughout the Euros. Nate, you going to agree or disagree yeah, I on mean, that? I mean, I said from the beginning, if Hungary, and I continue to say, if Hungary was in any other group, they would have been going probably forward. Mm -hmm. the, the second or third spot. They just unfortunately were in a tough, tough, tough group where if you were to, like I said last week, if you were put in a coma and woke up and I said Portugal won or France won or Germany won, you wouldn't be surprised. The, they are a solid team more than what people gave them credit for. It's unfortunate they're going home. I picked them to go home uh, out of this group only, not because they're a bad side, only because they're the weaker out of the, the three other teams. Yep. I agree. Um, but, man, one of the most entertaining teams uh, wow. in the tournament. So what do we what do we got coming up? we got 16 teams left, as we said. Nate and I are going to play a little game called Contenders and Pretenders. What we're going to do is we'll go through each game real quick, and we will decide uh, who moves forward. All right, first game up later today, the noon kickoff. We have Wales and Denmark from Amsterdam. Nate, who you got, Wales or Denmark moving on? I have Denmark. Um, I like Wales. I thought they were interesting, but I think Denmark's a better side. I think they have better players, and I think they're going to at least move on from this game. They'll probably struggle going forward outside of this game, but I think they have enough power to beat Wales. Well, I got Wales. Hmm. I got Wales. Hmm. I think I think Wales, um, they have been... They have been the fairy tale in previous tournaments. This year, it's Denmark who are kind of leading that fairy tale um, uh, path through. Everybody wants Denmark to win because we all know what happened with Christian Eriksen and the business that went on there. Uh, and then it came down to the final game for Denmark to get through. They scored. They had to win, you know, by X amount of goals there to beat Russia. And I, 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 I want to see Denmark do well, but in this game. I just feel the Wales are going to put it together. I see Chris, um, I see Gareth Bale, and I see uh, Aaron Ramsey doing what they've done in the first couple of games of this tournament, turning it on and getting the goals scored. And I see Wales coming. And, and from my understanding, Wales are the underdog, so um, it might be something for people to put money on there. But I think we're going to have to agree to disagree here because I got Wales, buddy. Schmeichel, Polson, that's it. You got a goalkeeper. You got a goal scorer. You're done. They're going uh, forward. They struggle to score goals. Ah, and, and they hold. They, yeah, so does so did England. But you still have them like winning the whole thing. This is true. Uh, this is very true. <laughs> um, I I will say. I think I would be more on the Denmark side if Christian Eriksen was in the team. Obviously, he's not, uh, as we know, as we talked about. Um, but but I see Wales going to get done. This is a, this is going to be a close one. This is this isn't going to be a, a walkover for either team. Uh, this could actually get to extra time and um, and maybe penalties. So um, if it goes to penalties, uh, my money's with Michael oh, and yeah. Mark for I'll sure. Put, I'll put uh, him he's, in there. He's a class keeper. Uh, but but uh, if it if it doesn't go the full if it doesn't go past 90, I, I'm taking Wales on that one. Uh, and then later in the day today, uh, the three o'clock Eastern Time kickoff, we have Italy versus Austria from Wembley, London. Um, I know you're a big fan <laughs> of. I know you're a big fan of Austria. I love Austria. They're not going forward. <laughs> I would love for so much for the upset to happen. I'd be the happiest person in the world. But they're, I think this Italy team is is extremely well good. They're averaging three goals a game, I believe. <clears throat> they're going, I mean, they're going to they're gonna make this game look easy, I think, against Austria. I love Austria. I love how they play. I love some of the players on the team. But I, I outside of, like, me sleeping and and dreaming of us Aust and austria going forward it, it ain't happening no i agree uh italy have been uh, i i hate to class italy as a dark horse um but coming into the tournament no one they weren't the favorites you know they weren't one of the top four or five teams that were uh, thought of a winning but after the first three games they are clearly the team that's in form uh yep. they won the first two games three nothing uh, they beat Wales in the, in the, in, the uh, in their third game, um, playing a, a second string side there uh, because they didn't. They'd already advanced. They knew they were the top spot. They didn't need to play any of their their starters. Italy are humming along. They are tough to score on, 
and they can put the ball in the back of net without a true number nine. So um, it, it's, it's interesting they're set up. Mancini's got them playing well. It's going to be a good game from a stylistic standpoint, so give it a watch. But, uh, yeah, I think we're in agreement here. Italy move past Austria and into the next round. Sunday's games. First game tomorrow, Sunday. We have ne Netherlands versus Czech Republic from Budapest. Uh, this is an interesting game. This is an interesting game. Who you got on this one, buddy? I, I like Netherlands. I mean, it's they they are they are a class side right now. They're scoring a lot of goals. They're looking really good. I see them being in you know at least the final four there. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to put any money on them getting to the Final Four yet. I'd like to see how they do tomorrow, but I do see them advancing past the Czech Republic. Uh, Czech Republic have done well in the tournament so far. Um, I think they've hit their peak. Uh, I haven't seen... Well, I mean... I, I don't think they can get any better than what they've done yet, um, but I think I think Netherlands can even kick it into a gear, a, a next step, another gear here. It, I, I, it, I really like the way they've been playing in this tournament. I think you're going to see how weak the Czech Republic are. Yeah. It's very easy in a group of Scotland and England to look good. <laughs> uh, shots, shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> shots, shots, on... fired shots, uh, shots, shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! But but yes, I'll agree with you there. Netherlands, I think, are another class team. Uh, there was questions coming into Euro 2020 about them and and how they were going to perform and, and what type of uh, system they were going to have. They changed coaches, you know, close to the tournament. Um, I, they've been playing well. They've been playing well. So, yeah, I see them advancing past the Czech Republic fairly easily as well. Uh, second game on tap for Sunday, Belgium and Portugal from Sevilla. This is a good one. This might be uh, the second best game of the, uh, the knockouts here. Two heavyweights. Portugal, um, they had one or two ups and down, up and down games in the group stages there, losing to Germany in a, in a kind of a classic 4-2 match. Um, Belgium have played really well. They struggled a little bit. Had to wait for their stars to come on and come through uh, as they as they gain some momentum in the tournament. I'm still seeing Belgium <coughs> progressing past Portugal here. Uh, I think they are just too strong with some of those world class players that they have in their side. How, what says you, Nate? Belgium for sure. I mean, I I like Portugal. I like that side. They have a lot of good players, but. With with the midfield uh, staff of Belgium that are now healthy, with uh, Wetzel and De Bruyne, I I see them continue cruising. They're playing great. Um, Portugal, I think you could see the cracks in their in their team when they were playing Germany and even when they were playing France. Yep. So yeah, I'll agree with you. And uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has put a lot of goals in the back of the net. Penalties, so far, you mean? But he's mostly penalties. Yeah. Three of them been penalties. So. No. Um, I I think uh, I think Belgium will will probably walk this one and, and win two nothing. Uh, a lot of it's going to depend on Bruno Fernandes whether he can step up and yeah he's he's been a bit anonymous in this tournament so far. Um, a lot of critics coming in and and saying you know where where is he? What's going on here? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with a lot of those pundits and critics and say I I don't think he's shown up. I think he's been poor. I think he's been found out a little bit. Um, it looks like he. He's the key to things here for them, and I just don't see it happening. So Belgium walk it because Kevin De Bruyne is back, and he is humming along as wow. usual. World-class, probably, probably the best player in the world at the moment. Yeah. Top probably. five for probably sure, Top right? five, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was going to say it was going to be a little bit closer, but I can see where you say that they, they walk away. I, I just think Portugal will come, come a little bit. No, I think it'll, I could see a 2-1, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I think it'll get one. You know, sure. you got other guys, Jada and... Yep, Ruben Diaz in there that that are pretty pretty well. So yep, they they could do it. I mean, would you be surprised if uh, if Portugal beat Belgium? Yes, I would. Um, I I I would put it all on Belgium going going forward here. Hmm. All right, all right. I just think it's going to be a little bit closer. Yep. All right. Those are the games for Saturday and Sunday. Monday brings us Croatia versus Spain from Copenhagen. Uh, who you got, Croatia or Spain? I, you know, this is a, a perplexing one because Spain looks so bad the first two games. They did. I think Spain takes it, but I could Cro Croatia winning it. I mean, are, are going forward wouldn't be a, a, a immense surprise. They do have some great players still, but I think Spain Spain goes forward here. 
Yeah, I, I'm going to say the same. I think Spain will edge this one, but it'll be a close game. Croatia, they, they played. You really saw them play against Scotland uh, in the last game of the group stage there. They came out and played, and Luka Modric really is almost like he was 10 years uh, younger. He, he played true form there, uh, scored a brilliant goal outside of his right foot, came through and showed us the star that he is. He, he's a little older these days, uh, as is most of that Croatian team, but I think they still have it in them. Um, but still... Maybe not enough uh, yeah. against the Spanish side. And it, I mean, not every team scores against Scotland, right? Not every team needs to yes. score against Scotland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Croatia had to. Yeah. Oh. And, and, all right, we're moving on. Moving on. <laughs> all right, we got France and Switzerland. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's it, got to be France, yeah, right? <laughs> nine out of ten times these two teams play. It's, it's got to be France. It has to be France. Swiss has good, some good players, but it's got to be France. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you got to you got to put your money in France here. A absolutely have if to. If you're doing that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, France, for me, are still the number one team in the tournament. Yeah. Um, they are they are a true form when they're coming along. And I don't see Switzerland putting any fight up against them really here. No. So uh, we, we can kind of skip right past that one. Could you say that Switzerland is going to be neutral in this tournament? Yeah, I, I think we could go there. Yeah, sure. Neutral? I don't get it. Onwards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's two games left. Um, we will start with the uh, Sweden and Ukraine game uh, from Glasgow. Who you got, Sweden or Ukraine? I think Sweden is is the second dark horse out of Italy. I think Sweden's a better team than we all thought they would be. I think Sweden wins this game, and I think they go on a little bit, and they're not going to win the whole thing, but I think they cruise past Ukraine, and I think they – I. I could see them, you know, kind of moving forward here uh, a couple games. I, I, They're I'm, tough. I wouldn't want to play them right now. I'm going to say that I think Sweden beat Ukraine. It's going to be a close game. But I also want to say I think, I think Sweden is a pretender. Oh, I don't think they are you. as good as you think. I don't think they are as good as a lot of people think. Y you will – you guys have obviously forgotten, and Nate, you especially, that in the first game they played, they had 16% of the possession. Didn't get scored 16%. on. 16%. No, they did not get scored on. Didn't get on. scored this on. This is true. They allowed 900 passes in front of them. Didn't they get did scored on. did not get scored on. They could have actually stolen the game at the end there against Spain. Yeah. But to give up 16% of the possession, they are missing some stars. They, are, they have a lot of injury problems. I don't think Sweden are quite as good as we what we're giving them credit for I think they're a pretender I think they'll beat Ukraine but then in the next round no matter who they play they'll get found out I think Sweden's defense is as difficult as an Ikea couch at this point tough to put together v very tough to put together I'll uh, I'll agree with you but they'll <laughs> like an Ikea couch God, I hope Ikea don't look at us and hope to sponsor this show at some point. Uh, I think they could fall apart pretty quickly. But comfortable. Fall apart comfortably? i just trying to help out in All case right. Ikea's listening. <laughs> yes. I am a big fan their of meatballs, Ikea and the meatballs, by yeah, the way. Yeah, their yes. meatballs are great. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, I agree. Ikea. Um, sorry, Ikea. Apologies there. Uh, sponsorship available if you're, if you're watching Ikea. Um, and then the last game, or the one... We really want to talk about here the one that the big the only game the big <laughs> matchup of the knockout round here England and Germany from Wembley on Tuesday um, who, you, who you got Nate who do you think's gonna win this one uh, the English or the the Germans what are you thinking well am I am I going fandom or am, am I going for real uh, for real who do you think's gonna win both both teams are yeah they have their issues I think for real I think you got a team who can't score and a team who can't defend at this point so penalty kicks and we'll and we'll work it out then oh god I hope we're not gonna do penalty kicks uh, I don't oh know, baby I don't know if I could take it um all right so before we get before we really jump into the meat of this one I I want to kind of hit upon your your penalty kicks there I know England have been working with a sports psychologist in the past couple of months for this very reason because they keep going out of major tournaments on penalty kicks. So, yeah, they've been working on it. They've been talking to sports psychologists out with about about it. it. If it comes down to it, England are prepared, but you still got Pickford and Neuer, and I'd still go with Neuer because he's one of the top goalkeepers in the world. Um, I, I don't think this one's going to come down to penalty kicks. 
I believe, oh, German's going to win in uh, normal time? No, oh, I, well, I that's believe very England brave. will kick into gear. I think oh. they will find their form. I think Gareth Southgate was playing a bit coy <laughs> through the group stages. I think he knows how to <laughs> unlock the Germans. Germany has had <laughs> some defensive issues in this tournament. England haven't given up a goal. Germany have given up a half yeah. full of goals. And, and England played Croatia, Scotland, and you know Czech Republic, where Germany played mm -hmm. France. You can skip Hungary, even though I think it's good, but France and Portugal. There's a difference between where those two teams are ranked and the other three teams that are ranked that I, that I gave. I think I think the old legs of Germany in the back. I don't think old they can legs. handle Grealish, uh, Sancho, Foden, and and I hate to say it, but Sterling has still got a little bit of pace with him. I don't think they can handle that. A Mason Mount coming back from uh, self isolation. I don't see the German defense being able to hold for 90 minutes out on that group. The German defense has issues. I will give you that. Absolutely. I'm not going to sit there and say they have made a lot of mistakes and they made this tournament harder for themselves than it should be. However, there is massive issues on that English side when it comes to attacking. No one wants to admit it. I get it. We have the stars of the Premier League there, but they ain't performing like it's the stars of the Premier League. So it, England's got problems. I, until they until they prove me otherwise, and hey, if they come in and blast five goals against uh, Germany, okay, I guess I'm wrong and they fix their issues. But I don't know that they are. We can't predict the future. And as of right now, three games, two goals against sides that aren't very good. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so they have played sides that are not very good, right? Croatia, Czech Republic, and Scotland. They didn't do very well in some of those games. Uh, they, they held. <laughs> I still don't think they've played their best team. I think Gareth Southgate is figuring that out. Um, but do you honestly think that the German defense, if, if played, can hold Foden or Grealish uh, and Mount? Do you think they can hold them for 90 minutes? Nope. But the defensive midfield can if we play the right people. All right. And that's and that's where I would that's where I would key in that and that's the the beauty of the 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 system that they're playing is I can run with three backs and just say pack the middle and I can rely on a defensive midfield to to do the work on those those other players. Sure. All right. Let me ask you a question about the England team that I'm kind of uh, because you've got you might come up with a funny perspective on this one. Um, who do you think should start in the back line for England uh, specifically in the center back? So John Stones. And, um, and Tyrone Mings started the first couple of games. Harry Maguire became healthy and started that third game. Yeah. Uh, Stones went off injured. We're not quite sure what's going on there. So Mings came back in. But out, out, of, those two, out of those three players, who should fill the starting two roles for center backs, Nate? Because I know you're a Man United fan. Yeah, I want to change it. I mean, um, unless Stones is injured, I want to change it. Uh, you, you, You'd go with Stones and Maguire? Why, no, I would go with uh, Stones and Mings. Mings. I want to change it. Uh, unless Stones is injured. I mean... Mm. This is not the time to play games in a tournament um, unless there's problems or issues mm -hmm. where I could see uh, Germany changing their back line a little bit because of the mistakes. That's a different story. England hasn't given up goals, so why change it? You know, why why right. change? Don't, don't fix what's not broken. So unless there's an injury problem there, I think you, you roll with what you've been starting with um, and what has worked for you. Okay. Do you see Timo Werner starting for Germany up top? Absolutely not. Um, I think he's he's a guy who comes in off the bench. I think you still run with, the, even though they they've had struggled a little bit, and even though Nabby has struggled a bit, I think what he does off the ball and the way he carries the ball uh, works. I think um, I think you roll with the three that you've been rolling with. Okay, I, I like that answer. Um, the, the only changes I would make for Germany is go on in the middle. I think you can do better. Um, I, I, I don't think he's as active as you need him to be. I think there's other defensive midfielders you can put in there that would, would get stuck in more, that are a little bit more athletic than him. That would be the one change that I make, and maybe one of the center backs, maybe. Outside of that, you don't want to tinker too much in a game like this. 
Yeah, I'll agree with you. Um, I'm interested to see what uh, a lot of the viewers say. Uh, what says you guys? Uh, how, is England going to take this? Is Germany going to take it? And if so, what's the score? Um, go ahead and jump online in the comments. Let us know what, who you think is going to win and possibly what the score could be. Uh, and then we got the face, Facebook group set up as well. So make sure you jump in there. We got a lot of discussions going on. It uh, seems we have a large English and a large German contingent in our Facebook group. It's about been to get some, torn in two. Yeah, it, uh, as you say, it's going to get torn in two. Um, and, and Nate, you and I are planning um, planning something for this game. I think we're, you and I might do a little bit of a, a, a live watch uh, of this game. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be commentating along with the game here so you guys can join us on Tuesday at uh, 3 o'clock when this game happens. Um, will, will we, can we expect you in uh, full German regalia here? Yes, winners have to wear their winner's gear. All right, all right. I like where that's going. I like where that's going. Uh, give me, before we, before we uh, leave this topic, give me two reasons you think Germany are going to win this, and then, Nate, I want a score prediction from you. Just two? Because I got five. Just two? Uh, Narrow it down? Okay. Give me a top two. Give me a top, top two. Top two. Number two. Coaching. I, I can't argue Coaching. I, I cannot argue with Here's that. Here's why. Here's why. Per, what's the best league, in your opinion, in the world? Go ahead. Best league is English Premier League. Cool. Uh, from my standpoint. Sure, that's, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how many English coaches are on the top teams in the Premier League that win? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, no, the world no, knows that English coaches are essentially garbage. They, they don't they don't do well anywhere. They don't even do well in their own league. And you have one running the the, the ship. So number two, and the reason why you will fail is because English coaches can't win. They can't win in their own league. They can't win in other leagues. What? Hey, who coaches in Germany? Do you want to ask that question? A lot of German coaches. All the Germans. Uh -huh. All the Germans. We get bored and go over the Premier League and win, Tuchel Klopp. Just saying. Okay. The uh, Germans I, I have are no the coaching I have supreme. No against that. I mean, Dean Smith the is Germans. Aston Villa's coach. He's English. He's doing very well. Oh, yeah. How many Just, trophies have they won lately? It's I mean, okay. That's a little stop there. But it's yeah, not, well, you know, not recently. Not with him. championship. <laughs> uh, all right. So give us your number one reason. Then. What, what's the number one reason that Germany is going to beat England on Tuesday? Number eins. Is that, I assume that stands for one. One. Okay. And the main reason. And I didn't, you probably never thought this was going to get roped in, but it's coming. Stuttgart. That is the number one reason why Germany will win Stuttgart. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, Nate, Rudiger. I don't, I don't think you really know what I'm thinking, but please yeah, go ahead. And, you're uh, like, you Rudiger, Werner, they played for Stuttgart. Correct. They did, but that's not them. Lau and Klinsman, your favorite coach from Stuttgart, Klinsman, was the head coach while Lowe was the pr protege. And also, Lowe played for Stuttgart 1980 to 81 and also was the assistant there before becoming the head coach. He has Stuttgart in his veins, Stuttgart in his pride, and we all know that the world of football revolves around Stuttgart, as I prove week in and week out. All channels lie straight to Stuttgart, and that's why they will win, because Stuttgart. All right, so uh, I will... I'm very disappointed. Uh, disappointed in his answers? I, I agree, well, I number, agree with you. Number five was beer. Well, I was hoping number one would be uh, Germany and Germany would win. Mm -hmm. Come on, Adam, give it to us. Number one would be England. Oh, I like oh. that answer. I like that answer. You're hoping England would get in their own way? The number one answer that oh, Germany God. is going to win. We don't need help. You, you need to explain yourself on that one, my friend. Adam, we don't need help. <sighs> England, right, listen, England doesn't. Listen, German, Germany doesn't need help here. All right, listen, let, let, let's hear from was, uh, behind the enjoying, scenes Adam. I was enjoying you going off on England. But they're going to lose because it's England. 
because it's England. That's why. That's the only reason they're going to lose. Number three, I had because it's the they all the players play in the Premier League and they're tired and they just want a break. I mean, that's a very very good reason too. And honestly, when you have <laughs> a walking, moving brick as a center back, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I feel bad for England. It took the dumbass coach three games to play Grealish. I agree. It's about I to agree. be sold for 140 million. He's not getting sold. Sancho right, can't. Whoa. Sancho can't find time on the freaking field. It's, like, <laughs> like I'm sorry. England. <laughs> England deserves to lose because of how stupid their coach is. And if you don't know your best team going into the Euros, what the hell have you been doing for four years? But uh, but Adam, that agree. goes into my number two with coaching. <laughs> couldn't agree I feel like more. This with is always an England problem. Everybody goes into the tournament and they know what they want to do. Harry Kane scores like 30 goals and 20 assists, and he somehow can't do shit when he gets to the national team. He's so angry. <laughs> All right, so I, I, I'll agree with you. I can't, I, well, I can't disagree with you, but I do think England come out of this. One, I'm, I'm going I'm to use my heart on this and not my head. Yeah. I do think England come out of this with a victory. One, it's in London. There's, there's fans there. The English fans are going to get the England team up. I think because because by the second half, by the time the second half rolls around, the team will be will have, uh, Southgate will have found his best team. Grealish will have somehow made his way onto the field. I'm gonna say that the the presence of Grealish and a Foden and a Mount is not is something that Germany just can't deal with. I don't see yeah. them being able to play with the young English stars. I think England's come out of this with a 2-1 victory. I think it's close. I think Kane gets a goal. And then... By accident? Uh, on accident. <laughs> hey, you know what? If he gets it on accident or he puts it in the back of the net, um, you know, upper 90, they all count the same. All count the same. I think Kane finds the net. Um, and then I think... I think a defender comes along and scores a, a Chilwell or a, or a Mings uh, or a Stones. Um, and England take this one 2-1. I think it's going to be the game of the, uh, of the, of the knockout round here. Um, but th there's, this is just a game that I, I don't care what you guys are doing at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. Tune in because this is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, Nate, we're going to we're going to go live uh, before the game here, and we'll uh, we'll commentate along with it. So hopefully, we'll have a lot of friends joining us. I in I, I mean, you do have a point. I guess France has no young stars mm -hmm. to deal. With, you know, I, I've never heard of Mape. You know, he's not very good. You know, never there's no young so stars on that France side and Portugal side that they had to deal with leading up to this. They're they're all old I, I'm and seeing, not good. I'm seeing a lot of comments online here. Uh, it looks like we got some some people picking Germany. It looks like uh, they smart people. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll we'll play a little game. We'll go live before the game, Nate, and we'll play. We'll have a little fun. Adam, uh, your money if you had to put it on someone who's going to be on Germany. Are you, is that who you're going with? Uh, I wouldn't bet who's going to win. I would bet the goal scored in the game. I would take it like under two and a half, maybe or under three. Under two. And under half? two and a half, three? huh? I mean, yeah. Germany can score on themselves at least twice. Well, I mean, they still that, win. But, but again, it is England. So either you know they're going to come out and play like shit, or they're going to come out and they're going to look like world beaters, and then they'll lose to like some random team in the. Next I mean, round. what what's awesome is is our center starting center back has more goals than your starting forward at this point. So. Yeah. Yes, um, I you think are correct. everybody has more goals than their starting forward. But he was still the number one goal scorer in the toughest league in the world, and the number Sweet. one assist getter in the toughest world Sweet. Uh, league in the world. And I'm, and I'm sure he'll do. Him. I'm, I'm sure he'll do great there. You have to play him when when this tournament's over. You have to play him. You have to play <laughs> Sancho and bench Sterling is what you need to do. I, I do want to see Sancho on the field. Um, they he, won't do it because it's too much of a risk. Yeah, it, it, he'll come on as a sub. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely not starting. I don't think he's he should be in the starting lineup at this point. He, he'd be a little uh, frazzled at that. Uh, but I do see him hopefully playing uh, some part in the game. All right, let's uh, – that we could go on forever about that game. Let's move on. Let's play a new game called Buy or Sell. You ready for this one, Nate? Born ready. All right, I'm going to give you some topics. You tell me whether you're <laughs> buying it or you're selling it. First off – Jack Grealish transfer transfer speculation. It has come out that Man City for a hundred million pounds, that's a hundred and forty million dollars, are looking at Jack Grealish from Aston Villa to Man City. 
What says you, Nate? Buy or sell Jack Grealish to Man City? I mean, it's totally common for small clubs to turn down lots of money and, you know, for players to be like, nah, I don't want to play in the Champions League and improve my, you know, stature amongst the world community and marketed ability. It happens all the time. They're like, I don't want that money because, you know, I don't want that money and stuff and villa and look at my, you know, villa. So that, yeah, that happens like quite regularly that, that these players just say, no Madrid, Barcelona city be gone with you. I, I don't want the money or the fame or the ability to win trophies. I'm going to stay over here because of pride and stuff okay and whatnot all right that happens so you all the time you think that yeah. you think that transfer very well could happen huh no i did you not hear me i clearly yes. said it would never happen right. ever in the history of ever that a player Here's, would move on to a better team i hate to say it, city's a better team but C- city is definitely the bigger club at this point huh? because of their stature of in the current game and the money they've spent currently i mean overall the club is not comparable in size to Aston Villa. Sweet. We are bigger. Uh-huh. And we've okay. won in your own a mind. European uh, championship. Uh, by the not way. in my lifetime. Um, Doesn't matter. Still have one. Okay, so here's why. I, I want to get some facts out there about this transfer speculation of Jack Grealish. Okay, the article came out yesterday, and I received dozens of messages of people telling me Grealish is off to Man City. If anybody actually bothered to read the article... Reading Man- is overrated. Manchester City are thinking of bidding 100 million pounds for Jack Grealish. The two clubs have not spoken. Jack Grealish signed a five-year deal last summer. Aston Villa are actually talking to him this summer about signing a new deal. Jack Grealish has no desire to leave. No, I, before you say, I do not know that personally. I do not know the man personally. Um, Yes, there are a lot of players who like to jump clubs and get more money. Aston Villa can pay him more money. We have, we have, in the last couple of years, every year we've progressed. Finished 11th this last year. The the goal for this upcoming year is to finish in the top six and get into Europe with Jack Grealish. We have a better chance of doing that with Jack Grealish. We will pay him more money this year. We will build around him. We already have one or two new players in the door. We will build around him. And here's what I will say. If we fail to get into Europe this upcoming season, then Jack Grealish has my blessing to hand in that transfer request and say, I would like to go play at a Manchester City or an Arsenal who won't be in Europe either, or one of the big boys uh, in in Europe like Barcelona or um, whoever it may be, right? But I don't see that happening. So everybody who read the, the, the title of that article said, they, the title literally said, Man City, 100 million pound transfer for Jack Grealish. Man City have not lodged a bid. They haven't even talked to Aston Villa. The two Villa owners have come out recently and said, we don't plan on selling. We are not a selling club. We are building. One last reason why this doesn't happen. 25 year old Greek freak NBA player, Giannis Antetokounmpo plays for the Milwaukee Bucks. And I know you're looking at me like, I thought we were talking about soccer and Jack Grealish. The owner of the Milwaukee Bucks is Wes Edens. He is also part owner of Aston Villa. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, the NBA MVP, was due up for a contract. And he was looking possibly to head to a bigger market team in New York and L.A. and Miami. And Wes Edens and the Milwaukee Bucks stepped up, offered him a max deal talked him into staying he is very happy the bucks are progressing through the playoffs right now and i think west edens and the owners and the board at aston villa do the exact same thing for jack Grealish. they convince him to stay they give him enough money to stay they continue to build around him and they progress next year jack Grealish, aston villa boy boyhood fan of the club he ain't going anywhere yeah hopes and dreams buddy um listen Every athlete is living game to game. At any game, you could get injured and you're done. You're done. Your career is over. It it can happen. It happens all the time. You have a bad year. Your value goes down. You're saying, hey, he's going to stay because we hope, we want, we desire to do 
A, B, C, D. Cool. Um, or the big boys come knocking saying, we're not hoping or desiring. We are. That's awful tough to turn down. It doesn't mean that he is turning his back on Villa. It doesn't mean that, like, I don't view it that way. I view it as a player going, these are the things I want to accomplish in the game, and I have the ability to do that with this other team right now versus I, I get hoping I get you. that the guy, the side I stay with, uh, yeah, yeah. But, and I don't think that's I don't think that's a it's not a knock on Grealish. That's not a knock on any mm-hmm. player that that accepts that. That's in like it's impossible to turn down something like that. I, I'll, I'll agree with you. It's it's hard to turn that down. I think I just think that J- Jack Grealish is built hope. differently. Say hope. He is hope. Uh, he's built differently. He's he's of a different ilk, and he will turn down that if it is offered uh so you're buying it i'm selling it we'll right. see what happens this summer time uh, will a- tell adam you want to weigh in on that you want to buy or sell you're nope. off all right no you're selling. So it doesn't care it. his hair right. is not fancy enough for me next one on the list for us to buy and sell tottenham still don't have a manager this is great april 19th jose nope. Mourinho out they're working it out with we Quinsman. Are- would it be three months past? I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. The amount of managers have gone past. The newest rumor is uh, actually one that was rumored a couple of weeks ago. Nuno Espirito Santo, the former Wolves manager, um, is being talked about as a manager. But there is, before we get to whether we buy or sell this, online Tottenham fans have started a hashtag, say no to Nuno, because they believe he is too defensive. His football is too defensive for them. I don't even. All right. I, I'm, if I'm Tottenham, I'm buying this because this is the type of coach, a uh, manager you need for your club. Uh, Tottenham fans, you're dumb if you think you can get anybody better at this point. Um, and, and why you would put something out like, oh, he's too defensive. You realize you just had Jose Mourinho, right? And you were all very happy with him. I mean, Parks the Boss and Counterattack Soccer and everything. Uh, Nate, you buying or selling? Uh, selling. Nuno? Why would I get that washed up beard face when I can get a Klinsman? Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Pride of Stuttgart. Let's all agree Tottenham are stupid. I, I, I mean, yes. Uh, sorry, Tottenham fans. I got a few friends out there who are probably watching. Klinsman. I apologize. Tottenham, you have made an absolute hash of this. You this- fire... One of the most successful managers. I don't care what happened. You fire I, him. Yeah. You go a week a week before you're due to possibly win a trophy. Like your first which trophy. Which is why you hired him. Yeah. I and thought then he... and then when the season's over, you're gonna go hire the guy that was fired by the team that hired the guy you fired. Yep. Fuck you. You deserve to be shit. Wow. Uh, that's why Adam I love got Adam. stuck in traffic today, and he so, is just so, woo! so passionate. I love it. All right, I, I think we're all on that. Uh, Tottenham fans, get your stuff in order, man. It, 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 you guys just need a manager at this point. Um, so it, we'll see where that goes. Um, wh- why don't we skip right to um, buying or selling UEFA getting rid of away goals? Uh, this is an antiquated uh, rule they've had in place. I've liked it, to be honest, but in the modern game, it, it is... It sets up for defensive tactics, especially when you're playing at home because you don't want to concede. Uh, I do like the fact that uh, Sir Alex Ferguson has come out, Arsene Wenger's come out against it. So UEFA are getting rid of the away goals. Uh, this unfortunately will lead to more penalty um, kind of shootouts uh, towards the end of games, which have become a lot more less of a flick of a coin and more tactical. Um, buying or selling, getting rid of away goals, Nate. Selling. I hate this. This is stupid. Um, I thought the home and away goals made the tournament unique within sports. It's not done in very various other sports. And penalty kicks at the end of the day, if it goes to that, is basically a guessing game that doesn't determine the better team going forward. I don't know why they did this. I don't know why they decided to do this. It, it just was a dumb all around. Okay. All right. Well, I was, I'll be honest, I was, I was on board with you and selling it, but then I read some more, and again, Arsene Wenger and Sir Alex Ferguson are the ones kind of leading this charge to get rid of away goals. 
because they said defensively, uh, sorry, as managers, they set their teams up defensively at home, um, which becomes less of an actual soccer match, right? If you're just defending and not trying to give up goals. So because they're on board with it, I'm on board with it, so I'm buying. So we're going to dis agree to disagree on that one. Um, we got a few other ones here for buy or sell, but I think we're just going to skip right to my favorite one and end it there. The GOAT turned 34 years old two days ago. That's right, the one Lionel Messi, 34 years old. Um, for me, I'm going to buy that he is still one of the best players in the world when he feels like playing. When he, when he decides to play best player in the world, I don't think we're ever going to see a player that equals the skill level, the records he has, the numbers he has, best player to ever grace the planet. Uh, I'm buying it. You sell him? Buying or selling? Selling. You don't I don't think he is. I think Ronaldo is. I think Ronaldo has left various clubs, has moved around, and has succeeded everywhere he's gone, and has actually done better internationally than Messi. So I think statistically, and when you look at what he's done and won outside of a single area, Ronaldo's better. And I think that's harder. I think this is setting up nicely for a side video, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. Ronaldo versus Messi, because I am in Team Messi. You are clearly on Team Ronaldo. Um, we looks like you're selling. I'm buying. Messi, for me, still the greatest ever. You're disagreeing. Um, we're, we're running a little long due to some buying or selling arguments there, specifically the Grealish one that went long. We both disagree. We seem to disagree a lot today, Nate. Sorry. I mean, I hate to be right. I, I, I wore I my smart hat. I thought, I thought we had you on the show because you knew what you're talking about, but you proved me wrong here, my friend. <sighs> wow. I mean, Grealish going, Ronaldo, I, I just don't. I, I, I hate to, to throw the reality on your, your pipe dreams there. You know, that's... I, I, know, I know their opinions, but they're wrong, my friend. Ooh. All right. Next, we're going to answer, we're going to introduce a new segment. We're going to call, we're going to uh, play today, Mail Time with Craig. So, I've received one or two emails from viewers, which I would like to uh, read. And then I'm going to write an email. All right. So first up, I'm going to write an email. Dear Christian Pulisic, thank you for everything you've done for American soccer. Very much appreciate it. I love the fact that you're attending MLS games and coming out and supporting the local leagues and local youth camps. You are doing a great job. But who is the girl you were with last night in Miami? People want to know. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. So I questioned why she might be wearing a, a uh, Croatia jersey. He's transferring to Croatia. Yes. No. No, no what? definitely not. So apparently Christian Pulisic is... Um, of Croatian descent, so I'm really hoping this young lady that he's sitting next to is not his sister. So, Christian, I'll continue my email to Christian. Please tell me this is not your sister, and she may be a friend. Throw Signs. Something, throw something in there about his arm sleeve tattoo. It's really Ooh, nice. Yeah. It's really very cool, cool yeah. tattoos. Yeah. Very much like that. Yeah. You should move to Aston Villa. What? <laughs> um, yes. All right. Thanks, Christian. Hope to hear back from you. All right, next email. Dear Daniel Levy. Hire Klinsman. No, I oh. am not available to manage your club. I am a soccer show host and don't have the time to manage your small club. Do me Please stop calling me. Can you do me a favor? Throw in that I am available and accolades include winning the Bundesliga with Stuttgart in FIFA 2021 on hard level. You're actually the number one candidate right now yeah. because of that. A hard level. I, I'll put, put hard level in there because most people just do an amateur. Yep. It's, it's hard right. level. World class, I believe, is what it's called. Daniel, feel free to call Nate. World class. He will yeah. manage your club while wearing his silly hat. Okay. You mean my German wizardry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Same, same difference. All Ooh. right. We received an email this past week. Um, I, I didn't know whether I wanted to read it or not, but you know what? We're going to do it. This email comes from a Mr. Sam Billerson. Mm, mm. Longtime show and friend. 
uh, a fan uh, and friend of the show. He says, why does Nate look like he ate Popeye, Popeye before he came on the show? Pop, like the chicken? Or the <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't eat fried chicken. Okay. Also, why did Nate miss leg day again? I, oh, I, how I, dare this, you? This I cannot answer, <sighs> but thank you for calling in. How for, dare you? For anybody who wants to write into the show, um, you can find my email address, Craig at wearesoccer.show. Notice the dot show and not dot com. Craig at Fancy. wearesoccer.show. Feel free to write in, and uh, if your email is good enough, we will read it on the air. I so, just want to note, though, a side thing. I do legs every Saturday, and I don't work out on the weekends. I, I'll actually believe that. Yeah. Um, uh, if, <coughs> if we do get emails back from a Mr. Daniel Levy and a Mr. Christian Polisic, we will let you know. So this has been Mail Time with Craig. All right, we're going to quickly skip ahead to the local pro soccer segment here on We Are Soccer, sponsored by Detroit City FC. Detroit City FC, supporter-owned, a fun environment with family sections. I re highly recommend you guys in the metro Detroit area head out to Keyword Stadium and watch Detroit City FC. Games are also online and available to watch there for free on their YouTube channel or on one of the other links that they have. I am at most games. I really enjoy it. Um, I, I got to be honest, for the money, best value in Metro Detroit for sports. The next men's game is tonight at 7.30 against Chattanooga FC. And then the next game, Detroit City FC are in the NISA championship game, and they will either play Chattanooga or LAFC. Um, I tell you what, man, it, it's, it's so fun to watch a local team do well and bring home silverware. They've got another chance to win a trophy and uh, have it displayed at their field house. Next Saturday, July 3rd, get out there, get online today, debtcityfc.com, purchase your tickets before they're gone. Uh, and if you're out there, come up and say hello. I'd love to chat with you guys. Leading into that, to this, I was lucky enough to interview one of the local stud players for DCFC. I've been singing this guy's praises for weeks now. Every game I watch, he is the central midfielder. He controls the flow of the game. DCFC have done a phenomenal job of getting this young man into their club, and I believe he is one of the main reasons they are undefeated at this point. Maxi Rodriguez, the number 21 player, just for myself, like I said, the standout player. Uh, why don't we go ahead and play a quick two-minute clip of my interview. The rest of the v interview you can find a little later today on the We Are Soccer videos uh, on our social channels, but I'll give you a quick little snippet of, of that uh, the interview. If we could play that for, uh, for now, please, Adam. So, to be honest, I didn't know if I would ever play again. Hmm. So, I kind of found out that Trevor was interested. He said, hey, come down to Detroit, check it out, see if you like it, train with us, and, and then kind of on, on a trial basis and got here, uh, thankfully did well, and then everything kind of figured itself out from there. That's, that's a crazy story, to be honest. I mean, for someone who didn't play soccer or didn't, wasn't attached to a club for the year, uh, and came and kind of did a trial and now all of a sudden you you guys have played 11 games and you've started all 11 games you've been man of the match twice and you've also been in the nisa team of the week once so that's kind of a that's kind of it's it sounds like you've you've really um kind of got your nose down and just started working and getting to it because it's really paying off it, from what i can see right yeah now I, there's a lot of um obviously covid affected everyone but Every day I kind of woke up and, and understood that there's no one watching, but I had to, to do that dirty work. And if I wanted to be back at where I want to be and where I think I should be, then obviously it's not going to be handed to me. So I got to continue to work. So I went out to the fields, um, worked out probably two, three times a day, had really nothing else to do and was just hoping for an opportunity. And, and then Trevor gave me one. So ever since then, told myself that that I was going to work every day for that and, and not take it for granted. 
Well, that, that's great, man. That's awesome to see the, the hard work's really paying off. Uh, and, and, you know, what, what's it like kind of uh, playing under uh, Trevor James? He's, he's kind of a legend. Uh, the people he's worked with, he's coached with uh, and played for. Uh, how, how is it uh, with, with the coach? Uh, he's just, he's got such a big name in the game. Yeah, Trevor, since the moment I met him, um, I understood that he had a great background, but I mean, when he name drops David Beckham or mentions stories of when he was at Chelsea or Barca, it's just like, okay, you really understand the, the weight behind the name, but he's honestly such a humble person and, and, and so easy to talk to that it makes everything so much easier. He's put trust in me and as a player, that's all you can really ask for, so... All right, as you can see, Maxi Rodriguez, what a player, what a nice guy to interview, super, super nice dude. The rest of that interview is available on We Are Soccer on our social channels. That'll be up later today. I highly recommend you guys go ahead and give that a watch. Maxi gives some of the advice, tells us about some of the advice he was given as a young player and how he still carries that through his career today and kind of passes that on to some younger folks. So go ahead and give that a watch. Uh, and then get out to Keyworth and watch him and the DCFC team uh, play. All right, youth soccer brought to you by Michigan Jaguars. Michigan Jaguars, fun, friendly environment, a club for players at every age and every level, the ex an experienced and dedicated coaching staff. Some of my good friends coach there. Uh, I love the club. Uh, couldn't be happier that my kids are part of it. MichiganJaguarsFC.com. All right, uh, I came across a clip last night that I wanted to share with everybody. I, uh, I was kind of going through Twitter um, and came across um, a player who was, who was showcasing some soccer skills. Um, and I tell you what, I, I really just, I was, the quick feet, this player, she, she, was, she was showing. Um, I went back through some of her old tweets and she has She's kicking a ball, I think, with a, either a trainer or a dad or something. She can kick the ball left foot. She can kick the ball right foot. This is what I want to see some of our younger players do. Um, as you can see here, just look at these quick feet. I, I tell you what, you do this for five minutes a day, you're going to get better. The confidence on the ball, you'll learn to get your head up more. Do this if you are a young player. I mean, she's got four cones, a ball, and five yards worth of space. You'll see here, she kind of messes up a little bit, and then she gets right back onto it. Uh, this is what I love to see young players doing. Do this, all right? I've been out to Aaron at Next Level Training. They do this type of stuff, all right? They do it, and they force their players to do this. The best players are the players that do it at training, and then go home and do it on their days off, right? In the interview, Maxi Rodriguez, uh, Detroit City FC player, he says the same thing. He goes, on my days off, I'm practicing. I'm on a ball. I'm out at the field. And that's what you need to do if you want to get to the next level, kids. So uh, that young lady is Sloan Phillips. Uh, I want to thank you, Sloan, for letting us use that clip on our show here. I very much appreciate it. Um, keep up the work. I have no doubt if you continue to do things like that, uh, five, ten minutes a day, the next couple of years, we're going to see you playing at a really high level. All right, Nate, I got a fun one for us today. So, you, uh, were you a baseball card guy back in the day? No, but Marvel cards, comic book cards. We're just going to gloss right over that. No? Um, oh. No, I don't even know anything about that. I was out at the store the other day, and look what I found for us. <whistles> Two packs of Euro 2020 cards. There's eight cards inside. So Nate and I are going to go ahead and we're going to open up our packs of cards and then we may trade. If you get a card that I want, we'll see if we, and I get a card that you want, maybe we'll see if we can do some trading. So I will give you Harry Kane. I don't, I don't want him. Uh, I, oh, no, I don't want him. You can keep it. that card if you get it. All right, I'm going to let you choose which, which one of the packs you want. This one. All right. Go ahead and open your pack of cards there, Nate. I'm going to do the same and then we'll see who we get. All right, so just so everybody knows... Ha! These are cards of players who are playing at Euro 2020. All right, buddy, who'd you get? Toby Adelwater, Belgium, defender. Oh, all right, all right. What else did you get? 
Sabiser. Actually, I like Sabiser. Uh, from from my my dark horse Austria there. All right, very nice. Digital pack. Pl oh. <laughs> Ruben Nives from Portugal. Oh. Yeah. I, I like that one. That's a good one. Matteo Kovac. All right, all right. So far, there's only one I want. Security. Oh. I didn't get that. Why did you get a security thing? In oh, well, you know, lucky. Well, I got a security thing because I got Pellegrini right, from right. from Italy. Italy. Nobody wants to steal that there. Uh, who is this? Uh, well, this is a Russian player. We'll just – he's not really relevant <laughs> anymore. We'll can't move along. Well, we'll just move along. And, oh, North Macedonia, we'll move along there. Not really important. important. Oh, uh, so, so, Harris Servisa. Kolf? Yeah, that's a good name for Switzerland. Everyone's right. laughing at me. All right. And you try to pronounce it with the little thing above the C. Yeah. See how well you do. All right. So who did I get in my pack? I got Marek Hamzik. Ooh, this is actually, he's a pretty good player, man. I yep. like that. Marek Hamzik, he's a good player. And then I got Arsenal's favorite player, and all Arsenal fans' favorite player, a one Mr. Granite Xhaka. Ooh. Who? Okay, really? No. <laughs> and then I got Belgian player Tim Kastin. I have no idea how to pronounce his last name, to be honest. Took the easy way out. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Adam Lang from Hungary. Okay. Mamaged Ozgodev from Russia. You, that, that, that's I a just skipped my after. Russia guy. Yeah, that, you, that's a highly sought after card. And then Spain's Ansu Fati. Oh, okay. That, that's okay, not a bad okay, one. Not okay. a bad one. Okay. Ooh, from Scotland, Oliver McBurney. Oh, okay. All right. And then this is this one might be one you want from the Netherlands, Luke De Jong. De Jong, huh? Okay. Do you, do you want my North Macedonian goalkeeper for Luke De, De Jong? It's no, I'm not going to give you that for Luke De Jong, but I'll give you my Russian guy for for my Russian guy. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's Wait, fair yeah. trade. That's there. a good trade right there. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to take a – oh, Andre Semenov? You didn't know how to pronounce Andre Semenov? I skipped it because it was Russia and nobody cares anymore. This is true. <laughs> I, I was expecting a little bit more from these packs of cards, I'll be honest. Um, but that was fun nonetheless. You know, we have no German or English players in there, I so know. you know what that means. They're, they're both not going to win the tournament? Yes. Yeah. So it's a clear sign. So you still feel Germany's going to win. I still feel England's going to win. Do we feel that one of these two teams is going to win the entire tournament? <laughs> At the current state? <laughs> you don't even have any cards in your pack with, uh, yeah, with any of these true. players. This is true. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree. I don't, think, uh, I don't think either one of them I think are, my security uh, thing has more of a better chance right now than it's both true. these teams. I still think France are the, uh, are, are the hot favorite uh, and, and still the best team in the world for me. Uh, we'll see, though. We all know it's going to be Austria. As you can see, Nate has been drinking beer from his beer stein. All right. Prost. <laughs> that, that's going to wrap us up for today, folks. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to Adam behind the scenes doing all that hard work. A big thank you to Woodward Sports. Uh, love them. Love their app. Download their app. Don't let, download uh, their app. Get into it. Go ahead and give them a subscription on all their social channels as well. A big thank you to Gunter, I mean Nate, for joining us today. Avita Sain. It might be your last time because some of your opinions were just wrong. Awesome. Um, a big thank you to our friends at Detroit City FC, the Michigan Jaguars, Tim Merritt with Ross Mortgage, Superior Family Dental, and Next Level Training with Aaron Bird. All very good people, all very good companies. I give you my word on that. Do me a favor, guys. Go ahead, jump into the social channels, get some conversations going, jump into those conversations. We write back. We have a little fun. And uh, enjoy the games this weekend. Don't forget to join us possibly on Tuesday for the Germany versus England live. We are soccer watch uh, party we'll be doing. And uh, yeah, all good.